Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, part two of our discussion of nuclear power generation. And the question from the floor was, um, what happens if it springs a leak? Well, the, um, this is a good time to talk about the concept of redundancy. Does anybody know what redundancy is? It happens over and over again. Yes. A-N-C-Y or E-N-C-Y, I don't know which it is. Redundancy says the... See, that's why I was runner-up spelling champion, not actual spelling champion. But anyway, I think it's that. Redundancy means, right, over and over again. Every, every system in a nuclear power plant is redundant. The, I mean, there's not two reaction chambers, but there's two sets of cooling pipes. There are two sets of conduits. There's two different sets of pumps. I mean, it, w when we really study how one of these works, uh, as on page, I think, 391 in your book, there's uh, a much better diagram than this, but it's a, a, a newer system that's not as easy to explain. But um, every, every set of pumps, uh, every set of conduits, every set of electrical cables is redundant, meaning that if one fails, there's another one that automatically kicks into place because you can't make mistakes when it comes to nuclear power. Um, in fact, whatever your opinions on nuclear power are, the nuclear power plant itself is an exceptional exceptional uh, example of human engineering. It's sort of like when you look at the materials that go into space, you want to have things that aren't going to fail. Um, you want your rocket ship made of things that are not going to fail. That's the same thing that, that is done with nuclear power plants. Obviously, there are problems and mistakes, and, and what we'll see is a lot of it is uh, not engineering problems as much as maybe maintenance problems. But one other aspect that I have to tell you about is called the, the moderator. Because in order to understand the comparison between American or mainly modern world reactors and a Chernobyl Russian RBMK style reactor is the moderator. And what is the moderator? The moderator, moderator, the moderator slows the neutrons down because, oddly, if if the neutrons are going too fast, here's our uh, uranium atom. If the neutrons are going too fast, they will hit the atom and not fission it. What happens, maybe they bounce off, but it's one of those odd things that if it's going too fast, it, it won't work. Did anybody ever read the book Dune or see any of the movies, the terrible, terrible movies based on the book Dune? There's this whole aspect of they fight with these uh, knives and everybody has a shield that's like electrified around their bodies and if you just whack somebody with the shield it'll bounce off but the way that you get through somebody's shield is to come in slowly whatever. it's sort of like that then you go through the point is you have to slow the neutron down to get it to fission the atom if you don't slow the neutron down it won't work and so different substances will do that the one that we use is is just a, a form of water made with heavy hydrogen, which is, um, instead of hydrogen, regular hydrogen, oops, one proton, no neutrons, we use heavy hydrogen, whoa, with three neutrons, or two, three, two neutrons, excuse me, very on film, um, and if you make water with that, It's, uh, well, this is called tritium. It's called tritiated water. And tritiated water will slow the neutron down just enough to put it at the right speed to cause the, uh, the fission reaction to take place and to cause the atom to split into lighter elements. And so, too fast, without the moderator, just right, with the moderator. And um, 
So in, in a modern style reactor, we use water to, to accomplish that. The, the one thing we're going to see, or the one thing to know, there are many reasons why the accident in Chernobyl, which people have heard of, has everybody heard of that? 1986, there was a meltdown of the plant in Chernobyl. Did it blow up? It did. It exploded and it spread literally tons of, of fission materials over about two miles. Um, there's a lot of reasons that that wouldn't happen in an American style plant. Um, the first one that I'll just show you that's very easy to understand is that uh, a Russian, R I think it's RBMK style reactor, this was a Soviet style reactor, um, has a moderator, not, it's not moderated with water, it's moderated with graphite. Same stuff that's in pencil. <coughs> and it works just fine as a moderator, slows those neutrons down just great. But the problem was, well, there were two problems. They lost, they lost cooling, the reaction got out of control, the vessel, the reaction vessel overheated, and the cooling rod, not the cooling rods, the control rods failed, and, but the neutrons kept flowing. The neutrons kept flowing, and um, between the rods and everything got out of control. This isn't really exactly what it looked like, part of my crappy drawing. It went from a good drawing to a crappy drawing, but the point was the, um, the neutrons kept going after the, uh, the control rods basically warped and wouldn't go down. And then the second thing that happened was when it overheated, the graphite caught on fire. Graphite is essentially carbon, it's just like charcoal except that it burns at about 5,000 degrees when it burns. And so it was sort of an unquenchable fire. You can't just like spray the hose on it and you're going to put out a graphite fire. Um, basically it's going to burn until it goes out. And a lot of people say it's still burning today because what they essentially did was they covered the entire reactor with hundreds of tons of concrete that they dumped from the air. They dumped a whole bunch of cadmium and boron and stuff like that on top of it to try to stop the reaction, which they were not able to do. The core is still in the process of melting, and the fire, they, many say, is still burning. This is all speculation. But anyway, so okay, graphite reactor, that's one thing. The other thing is that an American style or a modern style non-Russian um, plant has a containment dome, a very thick, very substantial containment dome, over the reactor. And so, if something goes wrong, as something certainly did at Chernobyl, and there's an explosion, which there was, the, the whole thing blew up with enormous pressure. It, it all of a sudden was producing something like 10,000 times the amount of power that it was supposed to produce. It went way out of control. But if there had been a containment dome, it would have contained the explosion. In all likelihood, we don't have any way of really knowing, but chances are it would have done better than what they had, which what the Russians had was essentially nothing, a building like this. It was a nuclear reactor inside a building like this, and when the roof blew off of it, there was a roof like this. Acoustic tiles, some sheet metal, some iron framing, and that's it. Um, anyway, oh yeah, now I have to back up. I, uh, I said, I was talking about the graphite moderator. The thing is, in, in an American reactor, if you lose water in your reaction chamber, Yes, that causes cooling problems, and it causes overheating problems, and you can still have a meltdown, but the, um, what happens when you think about it this way, if all of a sudden you lose your moderator, if there's no moderator left, which means that the water drains out of here, 
then all of a sudden the neutrons start moving too fast again and the reaction stops. That's the last thing I just wanted to say. So an American style reactor or a modern style reactor, um, the, uh, the reaction stops when you lose the moderator. When you lose your cooling water, that also happens to be your moderator, that stops the reaction completely. That's also not a foolproof system, um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's the basics of how it works, and that's the setup for what we're about to see uh, about the uh, Chernobyl accident. Okay, thank you very much.